Hi everyone, welcome to a new video from Notrel Engineering. And in this video, we are going to see how to perform transient thermal analysis using ANSYS Workbench. This is the second part of series ANSYS tutorial of heat transfer analysis. In part one, we solved steady state thermal analysis problem. And in this part, we will solve same problem, but with transient thermal analysis. This is the geometry of problem. It is a 3D slab as shown over here. All the dimensions are in meters. We will apply flux boundary condition on this surface with value of 50,000 watt per meter square. And we will apply a temperature boundary condition on this back surface with value of 300 Kelvin. The initial temperature of whole body will be zero Kelvin. And we will assume all other surfaces are perfectly insulated. Just to briefly explain what is transient thermal analysis. So this is the transient thermal analysis equation over here. And you can see this contains a time term. Therefore, when we apply boundary conditions, the temperature of body will start changing and using transient thermal analysis, we will know how the temperature is changing with respect to time as well. And if we run this simulation for long enough time, finally, the system will achieve a steady state after which the temperature inside body will not change with respect to time. So in part one, we saw how to get that steady state temperature. We will not know how steady state is achieved, but in transient thermal analysis, we will know how steady state is achieved. For transient thermal analysis, we have to define in total three material parameters. One of course is thermal conductivity K, which is over here. And along with that, we have to define the density of material and also specific heat of the material. Again, we will assume material as gold for this problem. And the thermal conductivity of gold is given over here. Specific heat is given over here and density is given over here. All the values are given in SI units. Whenever you enter these parameters, make sure units are correct. And we will run this simulation for time 30,000 seconds. I'm not sure if steady state will be achieved in 30,000 seconds or not, but let's see. This is the overall ANSYS workflow. We have to start with step one and go up to step seven. Let's start with ANSYS workbench. When you open ANSYS workbench, check what are the units. So now units are metric. I will change it to SI because I want temperature in Kelvin. Then step one is to define which type of analysis you want to perform. Now we want transient thermal analysis. So you just have to drag it and drop it over here. You can rename this as well, but I'm going to keep it as transient thermal. Now the first step is to create a material for that double click on this engineering data over here by default material is structural steel, but we want another material. We will name it as gold. Now you have to drag and drop three properties. One is density. Then second is isotropic thermal conductivity. Just left click on it, hold it and drag it and drop it in this property over here. And finally, specific heat. In our case, density is 19,300 kg per meter cube. Thermal conductivity is 320 and specific heat is 129. Always make sure units are correct. Then just close this. Next, we will create a geometry. To create a geometry, you have two options. You can right click on this and see both options. One with using space claim CAD package and another using design modeler CAD package. If you just double click on this by default, ANSYS will open space claim. So for this problem, I'm going to go ahead with space claim. So just double click on this and it will open a new window. You're already in sketch mode to see the plane head on. You have to click on this button again here. You have to change the units. So go in file space claim options in space claim options. Go to this units and change this length unit to meters. Say OK. Now we will sketch a 2D geometry over here, which is given by this figure. And then we will just extrude it for thickness of 0.2 meters. To draw, let's select this line. First, a vertical line. Here only you can enter the dimension as 0.8 meters. Then you can just finish the geometry approximately first. This one is 0.4. Again, back and then you can dimension it. The distance between these two lines is one meter and the vertical distance between these two points should be 0 0.2. That's it. It is fully constrained now. Say end sketch editing. And now by default, this pull tab will be selected. So you can just rotate it a little bit using a middle button of mouse and then pull it up and enter 0.2. That's it. Geometry is done. Just minimize this. And next, double click on this model. Remaining all steps we will do in modeler. 
Double click on this and new window will pop up. Geometry is already here. As I always say, the best practice is to see this model tree and go from top to bottom. So first is geometry, expand this, you will see this geometry over here. In this, change this material assignment from structural steel to gold. In material, we don't have to change anything. Next in coordinate system, we have to create mesh. Click on mesh and click generate. This is the by default mesh by ANSYS. If you want finer mesh or coarser mesh, you can adjust the element size using this sizing button, but I will just keep this default mesh. Next, click on this transient thermal analysis. Here we will apply two boundary conditions. First is flux boundary condition. For that, click on this heat and select heat flux and select this surface, say apply. And here value is 50,000. Make sure again unit is correct, watt per meter square. Then rotate and select temperature. Select this surface, say apply. And again magnitude is 300. Make sure it is in Kelvin. If it is not in Kelvin, you can change the units from here. Both boundary conditions are applied. Now next is initial temperature. In our case, that is zero. Then analysis settings. In analysis setting, you have to tell ANSYS for how long you want to run the simulation and how many increments do you want. This step end time will decide the simulation time. This you can change to 30,000. 30,000 seconds and maximum time step maybe I would like to keep 3000. So we will have at least 100 increments. And if you keep program controlled in auto time stepping, means ANSYS will change the time step according to the convergence. Now this problem is very simple. I don't think we will have any convergence issues. But if you are solving a complex problem, you can change this to off and then manually you can decide what time increment you want. Anyway, so everything is done. Now go to solution, right click on it and then insert in thermal temperature and as well as in thermal total heat flux. This means you are interested in temperature and heat flux as your output. And that's it. Hit solve. A few moments later. And the solution is ready. If you click on this temperature, you will see how temperature is changing. And if you click on this total heat flux, you will see how heat flux is changing. If you click on this temperature, you will see the temperature distribution and also because this is a transient thermal analysis, you will see how temperature is changing with respect to time. So if I make this a little bit larger, here there are three different temperature graphs and you can see the corresponding table over here. The red is minimum value of temperature, blue is average value of temperature and green is maximum value of temperature. When we started the analysis, the maximum value was 300, which was defined on this phase and heat flux was coming in from this side and everywhere it was zero. So initially maximum was always at 300. So you can see it is constant for some time, but when temperature of this phase increased beyond 300, you can see the maximum temperature started to increase. And finally it reached the steady state. So you can see in 30,000 seconds, the steady state is reached because here the temperature is not changing with respect to time. And similarly, you can click on heat flux as well. And there also you will see how heat flux is changing with respect to time. If you want to do animation of how this temperature is changing with respect to time, you just have to click on this play button and you can find other solution information over here in form of report. I will not go over how to read this report and what you can find over here. That can be a topic for separate video. Now in part one of this tutorial, we solved the same example using steady state analysis. And if you compare this solution with that steady state analysis, you will find it is almost seen, which means steady state is achieved. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel to show your support. Also, you can find many similar videos related to computational mechanics on this channel. You can go to the playlist tab of the channel. Here I created multiple playlists so you can find similar topics videos at the same place. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know that as well in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.